Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here in this uh, conference here in Malaga. So uh, now it's time, uh, uh, after Kevin's presentation, uh, uh, to come to the point of view of the industry. So why we are using models, uh, uh, where models are lying to the overall design process uh, of the performed by design, and uh, some case study and some remarks. So let's start uh, introduction. So. Uh, there is a trend, a clear trend, uh, uh, towards the use of performed by design fire safety solution in, uh, in building design. And, uh, and this because uh, uh, our buildings are not uh, obvious. I mean, can be extremely vast. Uh, evacuation path can be really complicated. Uh, the architectural layout might impose restriction. And uh, uh, in uh, most of the time uh, where and, uh, and the building is, is, uh, is complicated, uh, uh, the prescriptive approach is not enough. So we need to come into the performed by design. So what is the performed by design? Uh, uh, and where is modeling uh, coming into the overall performed by design? So you probably know this, uh, this, uh, this chart has come from the SFP uh, design guide for performed by design. So uh, uh, modeling uh, uh, come into the evaluation. So you start defining a project scope, uh, identify goals uh, of your design, then define objective, uh, develop the performance criteria, then uh, the fire scenario, design fire, develop uh, the trial design, and then you come to evaluate uh, your trial design. So that's where the modeling part, uh, and it's what we are talking about here in this conference, right? And then you evaluate through your, your model, that can be algebraic, uh, zoom model, uh, CFD model, and uh, you see if uh, your design is okay or not, and you come back uh, to evaluate again. All right, and then uh, once we are in the evaluation part, uh, we need to uh, select the right model. So we come into another chart, uh, and uh, this again, uh, I had to read it because it's, I can't remember the, the right name, but it's guidelines for substantiation of fire model for a given application. Again, an, SP, an SFPE guidelines. So uh, the, 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 um, the process uh, of modeling is start uh, defining a problem, select uh, the candidate model, then uh, is there any candidate exist? So uh, is an evacuation exercise, uh, is a fire exercise, a radiation model, um, flame spread, whatever. It exists, yes, good. So we come into the evaluation if there is a validation and verification of the model. And then we start using that model. Okay. So this is uh, more or less uh, the, uh, where modeling comes into, into the, the overall design process. Okay, so uh, with this introduction, I'm going to show you some case studies. So uh, there are developers here developing uh, the, the, the main code, uh, uh, the preprocessor, pod processor, and the industry is using this model, yes. Right, so I'm going to show you a few different examples. So it's a large airport, uh, an interchange station, a high-rise apartment, uh, apartment hotel, and uh, a logistics center. All right, let's start from the first one. Uh, this is uh, the Madrid airport. It's the, uh, the largest uh, airport in, uh, in Spain. And uh, the overall objective of the, this project was to evaluate uh, the, the current fire safety level of all the existing terminals. This terminal was built uh, without complying with any uh, fire code. And there were no fire code at that time uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Spain. Um, well, applicable for, for an airport. Uh, so uh, there was needed to evaluate everything to, to check uh, if uh, uh, people are safe into the buildings. Okay, uh, so what we did was both uh, advanced evacuation analysis and fire smoke modeling, right? Okay, uh, I'm going to show you just uh, a small part of uh, the, the, the project. This is part of the Terminal 4, for example, uh, where the first step was uh, to uh, evaluate the existing configuration. And uh, looking at uh, the result of uh, the evacuation of the existing configuration, we identify uh, a few bottlenecks and few uh, situations that has been improved uh, using uh, logical and uh, engineering judgment. And then use the model again to see uh, the improvement uh, uh, with, uh, with the solution. So uh, in a here example, uh, that by uh, the increment of two corridors uh, with, together with uh, the redirection of part of, uh, of uh, the occupants, uh, we achieved to reduce uh, the, the overall 
uh, evaporation time by 30%. Okay, uh, you can see this uh, in the paper better than here, but uh, you can see the improvement uh, uh, with uh, the proposed configuration uh, against uh, the, the current one. Okay, same thing we did for uh, the fire, the fire smoke modeling. So we modeled the old terminal. We're talking about a, a massive model that was split uh, into 30 different uh, meshes. Uh, so you can see the picture of uh, a smoke view here of the FTS model. And the overall result uh, showed that uh, despite the, gr the great volume of the terminal area, uh, smoke had en enough buoyancy to keep uh, itself uh, at the higher level. And uh, basically, uh, it was okay for the occupants to evacuate the, the part of the building. This is just one picture of a quite complex project. All right, so this was uh, the, the, the airport. In the train station, uh, the second example is uh, the largest station in, uh, in, uh, in Turin that we uh, did together with uh, Michele is here and Paolo from Cantene. And the objective of the study was to evaluate uh, the fire safety level for the station and this uh, uh, for, for the old building. Uh, there was a, a, a sort of coupling between uh, the station and the, the tunnel as well. Okay, this is uh, the, the station. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, like 500 meter long, 20 meter high, and 30 meter uh, width. So it's, it's very large volume. Okay, um, we use Pathfinder. Uh, and actually, that, that, that's quite interesting because I took this picture uh, like a month ago, uh, showing the, the, um, the, speed, uh, the speed map. But when we did this uh, analysis, there were no map at all in, uh, in, in Pathfinder. So you can un understand how this evolves uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the great work you're doing uh, for us because it's much more uh, used, useful for us to have a map uh, than just uh, some people working there. Uh, okay, so uh, the evacuation analysis, uh, uh, here again, it was uh, looking at the current configuration, optimizing uh, uh, all the exit. Uh, there were a, a big ramp over there, uh, there were some problem, people right directing from, uh, from back of, uh, of the station. And then we compare this uh, again with uh, the fire smoke modeling. So we're talking about uh, uh, a big station, a big volume. So in this case, it was 15 different meshes. Uh, uh, ranging for 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 meter. Um, and yeah, the result uh, has shown uh, what we want to, to show, that people can evacuate in safe condition, but also there were some shaft uh, in between the station and the tunnel, so we achieved uh, uh, the, most of the smoke uh, to evacuate through this natural shaft uh, that was between the station and the tunnel. Okay. Uh, third case, uh, high-rise apartment hotel uh, in the center of Madrid, in Gran Via. Heritage building, so uh, building protected. You can do almost anything. You can change anything. Uh, the authority wants to keep it like it is, but safe, okay? Uh, so part of the building, it was an office building. Uh, it was refurbished into uh, an apartment hotel. And uh, of course, it was very limited uh, due to the heritage status of the building. So uh, basically, uh, that's fantastic, uh, the, the important thing is missing. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, we had just uh, uh, two stairs merging into one stair. And that's the problem, in, um, because they have different uh, property over there, different property over there, different property behind uh, the, the hotel. And here, you have one stair uh, coming out here, this Gran Via, and the other one coming out in the same uh, in the same entrance door. So we achieve uh, to merge this stair uh, going into the, the, the basement and then back again into the, the, the center stair. And uh, we used it with, with uh, Pathfinder, as you can see. And we show uh, with different configuration that uh, the density was very low, there were no bottleneck, and the solution worked. Okay, that's the evacuation analysis, and again, these beautiful maps that uh, are really useful for us. Right, uh, the last uh, example, logistic center. Um, the objective of this study uh, was to develop an alternative floor slab design compared to the cold requirement. Basically, here in, uh, in, uh, in Spain, 
uh, the national fire safety in industrial coal uh, required that at least 50% uh, um, of the, the mezzanine should be permeable. And um, so you need to use these floors that uh, can be a problem for, for the property because they have these trolleys to move and uh, to go into the, to move around the, the warehouse. So what we proposed was basically, this one is uh, the one with 50% uh, opening, so it's all permeable. And this one is the proposed solution. So uh, we, we left uh, all this solid and uh, we identify zone where the smoke can, can, can spill uh, close, to the, close to the walls, uh, to the center, to ventilate this uh, at the top. So this was uh, the perfect solution for the client and this was the one uh, using the prescriptive approach. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, there we go. And this is the result, uh, so you can see uh, here is uh, uh, the, the prescriptive approach and this is the, the proposed approach. No, this is the prescriptive and this is the, the, the proposed. So basically, uh, during the evacuation, they were talking about uh, like uh, the first, oh, pop. yeah, the first uh, 200, 300 seconds of, uh, of the time, uh, the proposed solution is much better than the prescriptive one. So uh, this is an example where uh, FTS, uh, the CFD model, has been very valuable for the, the client. Okay, so uh, conclusion. I show you uh, some nice picture, but some great work that has been done uh, using uh, FISMO modeling and evacuation modeling. So the role of modeling in uh, performed by design pro project is clearly gaining more and more important, that's clear. Uh, we are 100 people here talking about uh, fine smoke modeling and evacuation modeling, so that, that makes sense. Uh, and both models that I have shown here, Pathfinder and FTS, have substantially evolved during the years. So uh, if, you, if you think about uh, uh, FTS uh, or Pathfinder like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, uh, Pathfinder was not uh, even born, uh, so it was totally different. Uh, but engineers must be aware that building might have been designed with uh, the version of FTS like uh, 4.0.1 and, uh, and probably when Pathfinder were not even born. So what about those buildings are unsafe because we are not using the latest version or the advanced modeling? Uh, such building, uh, or at least they should be, as safe as the modern buildings. But this uh, because the engineering judgment of uh, the engineer. So without the engineering judgment, uh, uh, the result obtained by an advanced model might be totally useless. And this is not because of the model itself, uh, but because uh, the engineer, how the engineer used this model into the overall project. And uh, I finish with uh, an example, a remark, uh, driving a car. Uh, when you drive a car, you have a driving license, right? Uh, it requires the driver to uh, skillfully deal with uh, the steering wheel, the brake, the clutch, uh, the gear, and accelerate, right? So you have all this uh, instrument. But what about all the cars circulating other direction? You have signed to read in, uh, in real time, rear mirrors to be used simultaneously when looking at the road in front of you. So knowing how to deal with the control is not enough to survive in a busy street. I hope you got the concept. So drive safe. Thank you. Do we have questions in the audience? Yeah, Kevin. So um, I'm, I'm curious when you use FDS or, or Pathfinder in these projects, what kind of questions do the authorities having jurisdiction ask of you? Are they just, are they familiar with the software and they just assume it's okay? Or, or do they ask specific questions about how you're using the model for these particular, because these are obviously very large structures, they're very complicated. What, what, what kind of questions do they ask? Well. Uh, it really depends. I mean, uh, I have experience in, in um, many countries in Europe, uh, and uh, I can say that in Spain uh, they don't know too much about that. So the question can be like, uh, why you didn't put uh, CO uh, thermocouple 
ah, because it didn't make sense for this space, for example. So uh, there's no very specific question. But uh, it happened to me in other countries, uh, uh, well, most of the Nordic country, when uh, the fire brigades uh, knows about uh, fire engineering, and the question can be really specific. So um, what about the heat of combustion that have been used, uh, the heat rate uh, per unit of area or whatever? Yeah. So it really depends. But here in Spain, uh, I think uh, we need to train them before. Who chooses the design fire? You or the authorities? Uh, the comp uh, us, yeah. I mean, normally you have a negotiation with the, with the fire authorities. You speak about what you're doing. But um, as, I tell, as I told you, um, there's, no, um, there's no real uh, um, knowledge about that. So uh, I, I would say that uh, you can go with one megawatt or 10 megawatt, uh, and doesn't make too much sense for them. OK. Uh. OK. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it.